Okay, the system that I use is a sliding bar system with H frames. Over the years I've used different systems that have been commercially available on the market. What I've decided to do is look at all the systems were, that were available and a good friend of mine, an engineer, has done a system for me so that it's at the angles that I like to use, it's at the distance that I like away from the stones and the, the actual setup is just how I like it in order to be able to sharpen my tools both when I'm in the workshop for training and also when I'm out demonstrating at the shows and the club demonstrations. So what we've got, we've got a record 6 inch grinder on the right hand side what I've got is a white stone, the white stone is used to profile the actual grind and then on the left hand side I've got a carbon boron nitrate stone, CBN sto um, wheel I should say, it's made from steel and it's a diamond coating and these wheels are available from Wood Art Products and are th they're fantastic for putting a really sharp edge on it. I've, got an, I've had two or three in the workshop now and uh, over the last five, six years and, and honestly they really are brilliant for keeping an edge on the tool. Very, very quick as well. The system itself is made up of two H frames. The H frames slide in and out. They're screwed onto a plywood board and each system will go into each H frame. So I'll just lock it on with a thumb screw. On the right hand side what we've got, we've got a pivoting table with a rise and fall mechanism on it as well. And it's ideal for sharpening up all my scrapers. You can even use it for your, your straight grinds for your ball gouge and your spindle roof and gouge. But what I tend to use is the big sliding bar for those as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the spindle roofing gouge next and I'm a big believer in having training. I've had training with different professionals over the years and one of the first professionals that I ever trained with was a, a turner who is a fantastic production turner, he's called Les Thorne. And the first thing he said to us, he says, Andrew, when you're sharpening the tools, he says, just mark the actual grind with a black pen. And it was a great bit of advice because then what you can do is you can actually bring out the pivot point on the sliding bar and what I do is I get down here and I have a look and I make sure that that is actually exactly on the angle that I want the grind to take place. There we are, it's in position there. I tighten that in and then when we grind that, that angle should be reflected exactly onto the wheel. So what I can do is I can just make a mark like that, you can see on the wheel, and you can see on there that the mark has actually been taken off along the full length of the facet. And the facet is about 45 degrees. Okay, so let's think about safety. We've got the grinder set up, I've got a good strong pair of shoes on, or boots, um, I've got protective clothing on, my eyes are protected, and my lungs are protected using a face mask, so what we'll do is start and do the, the grinding. Now I've got my eyes protected with the wrap round goggles, I've got them here. At the moment I've got my glasses on, so I'll take them off now and I'll just put these wrap round goggles on and then I know that my eyes are actually protected. So for the benefit of the, the DVD, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the mask off. However, there'll not be much dust made, but I would suggest you do have a mask on because you do still time some, get some dust from both the white stone and you'll not get anything from your, your CBN wheel, but it's always good to protect your lungs in the workshop in any case. So I've got the spindle rough and gouge, and I'm going to set the grinder away and just show you how we actually do the grinding. Okay, we'll pop the grinder on. As you can see, it's a nice quiet grinder this one, so it means that I can actually speak over the sound of the, the wheels revolving. Some grinders are very noisy. If they are noisy, again another safety protection that you'll need is a set of ear, ear defenders. Put a set of ear defenders on and uh, it'll protect your ears because you don't want tinnitus from a grinder. Okay, so we're all set. This is set up and what I'll do now is I'm just going to lay that onto there. I've angled that onto there and I'm just going to lay it onto there and just go over once. beautifully sharp edge. The facet is lovely and clean all the way around and I actually sweep the, the wings back on a spindle roof and gouge, particularly for new students because it does help to prevent 
for digging. The angle at the front is about 45 degrees. I don't get hung up if it's 44 and a half or 45 and a half, that's fine, as long as it's about the 45 degree mark. Okay, so that's the spindle rough and gouge ground. What I'll do now is go on to a 3 8 10 millimeter beading parting tool skew. Okay, now 3 8 beading parting tool. This is the same as any other parting tool or a skew, and all we do is we set it to the angle of the grind and then I'll sharpen it up. So again, oh the other thing I didn't forget to mention before with regard to safety as well is I've also got these safety visors on the top here just in case any sparks fly out. I know my eyes are protected but you really need to make certain that you are looking after yourself. So gently lay that onto there and glide across the CBN wheel. Same on this side. And what we've got basically is just the weight of the tool resting on the actual CBN wheel. Now how quick is that to grind the tool? At the end of the day I want a system that I'm not going to spend all day sharpening and profiling my tools. I just want to be turning but I want sharp tools because turning with sharp tools is an absolute pleasure and it's much much safer than turning with blunt tools. If you cut yourself with a blunt tool you're going to hack yourself to bits. So keep your shoes, tools nice and sharp and don't cut yourself. Okay, we'll go on to the swept back gouges now and the traditional ground gouges. Mark on here, I don't do this with every tool now, but I did when I first started and I do suggest it's a good idea for people who are new to turning to learn how to turn in that way or to learn how to sharpen in that way. So I've left that on there, all I'm going to do is just wipe that again, have a look and yeah, you can, can you see the line is clean? all the way through. Okay, so again set the machine going. I'm going to start, all I'm doing, I'm pivoting the tool in my hand like that. My hand is, it's just, my finger and thumb are a pivot. I go onto the right hand side like that, turn it round, bring it round once. Twice. Nice and fluid movement. And there we go. How quick is that? It's absolutely a lovely way to sharpen your toes. Okay. What we've got here, we've got a small quarter bowl gouge with a traditional grind, but it's got what's called a micro bevel on the back. Again, the micro bevel was first introduced to me by a turner when I went on a course. The first turner I ever went on courses with, which was a, a chap called Jimmy Clues. Jimmy is a fantastic turner, he's produced a number of good DVDs and he uses what's called a micro bevel. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing a traditional grind there. So there's my tr traditional sharpen. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this arm in about 25 millimeters, one inch, and then I'll just take the back heel off the tool there. And what you get is two bevels. So it's a micro bevel, it's a shorter bevel, and it's ideal for getting around that tight corner when you're turning the inside of a bowl. Okay, a black pen again. This time I'm using the tool holder. Now this tool holder has been a design of Ian, my friend the engineer, he's looked at again all the different tool holders. What we've got, we've got a pivot point on there so you can move that arm from 90 round to about 15 degrees at this point here. And the tool is held with a little disc on here and just a knurled button on the top. Or Some of them are going to have, uh, be made with a, a, a wing nut welded on for those who have dexterity problems so as you can get the tool tight into the tool holder to circle in there with a little V in the bottom just to hold it into place and the tool is extended beyond the tool holder 75mm. A lot of people do 50mm. Now the reason I do 75 and again I learnt this from another turner that I went on a course with, his guy is Nicky Egar, fabulous sculptural turner. He 
showed me that if you do a longer extended grind on here, what you've got is you've got reduced thickness on cheeks. And that helps to reduce the turner's knock. It also makes a lovely fluid movement for when you're turning beads and coves. So I've got a notch out in the grinder here. I've notched it out 75 millimetres away from this edge. So all I need to do is just put that tool holder up again the edge there, push the tool along till it reaches the notch, tighten it, and there we've got the 75 millimetres. Now what I've done is I've cut a notch out 50 mil as well. Because what often gets happened is, especially when you're at the woodwork and shores, some people will say, oh well I only protrude mine 50 mil but I want a longer grind. So what I do is I show them how I get it with a 50 mil and I alter the angle on here. So whether you like 75 or 50 it's entirely up to you but you can do both. Okay, so we've got the tool in the tool holder ready to go. The other consideration we need to make, apart from the 75mm from this point to the end of the tool, is that we've got the distance of the actual cradle, the tool holder here, that's going to take the pivot point there. We've got that distance 150mm away from the edge here to the pivot point. And also, if you measure the height there from the actual top of the EH frame, to the centre of the wheel, 250mm as well. So it's 6 inch, 150mm away from the H frame and from the H frame to the centre of the wheel. I'm just going to mark the edge just to demonstrate how clean the actual grind is across there. These are just black permanent markers. And again, I'll just rest it onto there and just draw the wheel up. And there you can see there's a lovely straight line across the grind there. So we set it away. I rest it onto the pivot point here. I go around to the right and I start on the wing and I just lay on the wing on there. Bring it round to the centre. Go around to the left. On the wing, bring it round to the centre and then sweep it right the way around. Once. Twice. And then it's very sharp and we're good to go. Loosen the nailed nut and then just draw the tool out with the tool holder. And what I've done is I've drilled a hole in the back of the grinder. I just pop it in there when I'm not using it so I know it's there. So there we are. That's the spindle gouge ground and ready to use. Okay, the flat table, ideal for doing with scrapers. It is multi-angled, so what we can do is loosen that little stud there, and then the table will just pivot backwards and forwards. So what I do is I just line up the, the scraper itself until the angle reflects the same angle as the scraper, which is there. Tighten that up with the Allen key and I've got a little magnet on here just to hold my Allen key and then what I want to do is to slide the, the scraper straight across here. Now this scraper, these are available from Ashley Isles. Ashley Isles does these round headed and straight scrapers, the rye deal and I use it a lot when I'm demonstrating. So I'll just show you how we grind that. I'm just going to pull this back down. Now what you will notice that there's a lot more sparks with the white wheel in comparison to the CBN. CBN, sometimes you don't get any at all, sometimes you'll just get a very, very fine spark. And again, I think it just depends on the, the steel that we're using. So can you hear what I've turned that there? It's just catching the table there. So what I want to do is just loosen this off here and move it back just a fraction. Check it's not catching the table, like that, it's okay now, and then we're good to go. So set it away. The other thing I'll do as well is I'm going to protect my lungs because I'm using the white stone. There is more dust from the white stone. So I'll not do any um, speaking while I'm grinding the actual surface of the, the scraper, and uh, I'll explain when I've finished.